Okay, we, everyone, welcome. We are here at Atley High School for the tail end of, what do we call it, Judgment Week here. Big night tonight, Atley, Raiders. This will be the girls, I guess, really the last real big challenge uh, from a varsity standpoint. From a JV standpoint, I know Hanover's not, not too bad, so it'll be a good uh, match next time. Thursday at Patrick Henry when the girls take on the JV girls, or both girls take on Hanover. Um, but the JV team is down to their last three matches of the year. And uh, should be a good one tonight, Atlee. Uh, I did not write down what happened last time with Atlee. I know it was a good match. I think Patrick Henry won the match, uh, if I remember properly, the JV side of things. Uh, but uh, Atlee's a good program. They are usually pretty loaded with uh, travel players and such. I know the varsity team is still pretty strong and the varsity girls for Patrick Henry are gonna try to uh, avenge the loss that happened earlier in the season. A little disappointing loss as the girls were winning most of that match and um, just couldn't quite finish out a couple of sets. So we'll see what happens tonight with that, but I wanted to talk a little bit about the playoffs. I know that, again, most of the JV players are not going to be involved in the playoffs, or maybe one or, or two that get pulled up. I'm not sure. That is just my guess. I've not talked to Coach Jones at all about that, uh, but it's kind of normal for the coach at Patrick Henry, boys or girls, to pull up a player or two and try to max out the jerseys and give a couple of, usually a couple of sophomores uh, a chance to um, Get a little varsity experience, uh, even if they don't play much during the playoffs, but they get to practice more and and um, you know just get a, it just get comfortable up at the varsity level uh, during the, during the playoffs. So we'll see what happens with that. But yeah, the 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 uh, girls. Let's see. Let me get the latest standings, and I, I show this to you guys every time. Oh, I know. I need to. <clears throat> Excuse me, I need to move my camera back in order here. Okay. Standings were behind the camera, so I couldn't show them. Um, th this is through yesterday, uh, as, as these are being updated daily now, um, just to see where, where everybody is. There were a few matches last night, and that's why I want to make sure and get those in here. Um, you can see Patrick Henry is in the three spot. And quite frankly, I, I've done the math. <laughs> if PH wins tonight here at Atlee, Atlee loses. Atlee next week has got uh, a couple of very winnable matches, uh, as, as do we. So when we take that into account, I, I think mathematically we're not going to get ahead of Atlee. Um, you know, unless Mechanicsville, Mechanicsville can surprise Atlee next Thursday. Uh, at, at Mechanicsville, or maybe that's here, I don't know. Um, otherwise, Patrick Henry's going to finish third in the standings. Monacan's pretty much locked up number one. They beat Clover Hill Tuesday, and tonight they have a tough match against Cosby, but even with a loss, um, and th their last two matches on their schedule are Huguenot and George Wythe. You can see them at the bottom of the list. So I don't anticipate Monacan having any problems with those last two. So they... They're going to finish first, Monacan will, Atlee second, Pat Patrick Henry third. Then it's going to be a scramble for fourth. Uh, Hanover, Mechanicsville, Chancellor, King George, Cortland. All of them have a chance at being fourth place. It all depends on what happens. And also, I'm not quite sure, but the teams up north, Chancellor, King George, Cortland, uh, Spotsylvania, and Eastern View, those five are out of the battlefield district up north and they have a district tournament scheduled. So, and their schedule is set up so that they can absorb that into their, the number of games that they're allowed to play. They're only allowed to play 20 games. Um, so they have, most of them have a lighter schedule and then they add the district. So the, the district tournament at the end are gonna count as, as games. So it's gonna be a bit of a mystery of which team goes where, but uh, you know, I think it, they're, they're, the best they're doing is battling for fourth really in here. The other thing I did was if, if, if today the playoffs began this is what it would look like. Right here. 
And so you can see the four rounds of the playoffs. Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Wednesday are those dates. And Patrick Henry, like I said, more than likely are going to finish third and sit in that spot down there at the bottom of the bracket with a bye. So obviously teams first through fourth will get a bye, and the rest will play it out for uh, the first round to try to get into that quarterfinal round. And at the moment, Chancellor, a very hot Chancellor, they have won five or six in a row, I think, uh, is sitting in sixth. And Ryko, actually, and Ryko's won four out of five, but I, I think their opponents have been not super strong, but they've actually won some games to keep them up in the playoff above that red line. Um, so you can see that. You can see Atlee's opponent, maybe King George, maybe Spotsylvania. So you have that, and we're on the same side of the bracket as Atlee, the three and the two. So. If, uh, if things kind of go as planned, as seeds, then the Atlee Raiders would win. We would win. We would play this Atlee team on Monday, November 8th, and that would be, if the seeds hold up, that would be here at Atlee. Um, so let's still a lot of volleyball to play, but we are kind of getting down to the end here, and I think that uh, I think the one, two, and three are kind of locked in. The mystery is going to be who gets the last buy right now. Hanover, I don't think it's going to be Hanover. They've got to play Midlothian. They have to play us. Um, they have a couple of wins also on their schedule, I believe. But uh, you just never know. They might switch places with Mechanicsville. You never know. All right, let's get to it as the JV girls are getting lined up here. Zoom in on this. Sour. Number 28, Valerie Mari. Number 29, Simone Lawson. Number 30, Sophia Kent. <laughs> Canals. Number 31, Emma Hutt. And number 32, Hannah Six. And number 33, Molly Stewart. Oh, head coach Alyssa Bonfiovanni and assistant coach Jessica Jones. <laughs> Well, I applaud her for getting Bon Giovanni right. Always hard, I feel for her. See. I'm at an awkward angle, you can tell. I'm kind of off to the side as you see the stands on the other side are way back. I can't get up in there. I'd be too far from the court. And the angle would be really low. So I've decided to put myself up in the corner behind the varsity girls here and get out of the way of any fans as I think there'll probably be a fair amount of fans in here tonight so I know you guys are seeing this after the fact
important. Also, what what class? Like how old? All right. Here we go, Atley getting ready to start things off. And they have really small numbers. I probably put myself in the wrong corner. Trying to get things going. You can see on our side, Miley Murray in. Madison Mays and Hannah Six is the outside. Uh, Ryan Sauer in the middle. And I'll have to check the other middle in there. But Miley is the right side and Simone is the is the setter. Emma Hutto in for libero action. So the ball hit them hit the net for four hits there. Thank you. All right. So the other team, Curtis Carpenter is a coach of Hatley and he has been uh, a varsity coach for many years. He stepped down to be JV and allow his daughter to take over. Casey Ogden is the head coach of the varsity team. And uh, he is a helper there for that. Let's see if I can set up the Atley Raiders. I see 27 in the middle there. Caroline Coleman. So I can get some notes written down. And that set went to nobody. 13 is Izzy Turnour. She's set up as an outside hitter. Number 30 is Kara Fainer, the other outside hitter. Oh, no, she's playing right side, sorry. Try to get everything set up here. Madison Mays into the corner, good spot. So the Arrow 28 looks like Emery Fisher is in. Don't know what position. She's a setter. Emery Fisher. Simone getting things put into play here early as PH is up 3 0. And the JV girls have really come a long ways. This is just fantastic to watch. And the push. And the ball didn't quite get over there, so if I can keep setting up. Oh no, it looks like number seven, Allie Tompkins is a setter. Outside hitter. He's 28. Fisher. So timeout, Coach Carpenter wants to talk about it. 5-0 PH out in front. Sorry, I've been trying to record who's who on the Atley Raiders. Still down a player or two. Need to check the libero out there. The other middle two is on the bench. I haven't... Uh, I haven't caught them. Atley just doesn't, they don't put their rosters online and I had to look at the, my notes from last time to get that in. Hello. A good view for the future for these girls, as I'm sure they're going to be facing a lot of these Atley Raiders in the future the next few years. Atley also has a couple of eighth graders, Heidi Engel and Peyton Trice, neither of which I don't think either are on the court. I, I've checked the Libero's number, and the Libero makes a good dig there. And Simone just wins that battle against that middle. It's a good spot there. Looks like number 10, but that's 
There is no number 10, so I'm seeing the wrong number. Simone's still going. Good pass by the libero. Outside attempt into the net. Setter just pushes it that time. Good spot for Ryan. And that's going to go into the net. So Atley having trouble getting the ball over. 8-0. Simone not doing anything major. Just kind of getting the ball over for him. Atley just having some struggles getting it all together. There's a nice deep one there. The middle is going to push this one over. Oh, there you go. There's a point for Atley. It's afraid we might not ever find out who the other middles were. This is Emery Fisher, outside hitter. And that's an ace. Oh, no, that's out. Excuse me. Ball lands just wide. Madison Mays back to serve. Let's see if she does that high, high toss. I like that. Oh, well, being a little more conservative. And the hit by the libero goes wide. Between the dark jerseys and the dark numbers and those and the up ref. Can't tell who it is. That goes long. It might be number 19. It is, number 19, as she goes off. So the middle, the other middle comes in, and that is number 17. Oh, miss hit there by Hannah. 17, Jana Roboto is the middle for Atley. She's a ninth grader. And number 19, the, the Libero's an eighth grader, Heidi Engel. And Patrick Henry starts a pair of eighth graders. There's one of them to the other one. Back to the other one. Good block. Hannah six passing to Simone. Back to Hannah. Lots of Liberty Middle School action there. Oh, that's a good serve. And you get it right back. Good hustle by Emma. Back to Hannah again, who goes long by six or seven feet. Using her strength. 11-4. So here's Izzy Turnauer, the other outside. Good dig by Madison. Oh, not enough. Sophia Knaus is the other middle for PH. She tries to get that over. Natalie seems to have found some legs. Gonna go long, just just long. I didn't move the camera, sorry. About a foot outside that corner. Murray back to serve. Ooh, she's on the line. They missed that. I think she's done that quite a few times this year. And there's Sophia, good hard hit. Murray. No confusion, that set kind of went to the middle of three people. Oh, 
Good roll push by Corey Feener. She gets the serve now. Figure out how to run this corner here. How to manage it. Hannah back to serve. Well, that might find the floor. Just enough of a hit by by Fisher. Getting that over. So the middles will switch. In comes the libero angle. Again, just an eighth grader. And that overpass worked. <laughs> Rarely does it work like that, but the middle on Atley just kind of it was a little late to recognize it. Couldn't get up there in time. Sophia Canals back to serve. And into the net for Canals. Not a lot of serving opportunities for her this year. Get to not that, not that uh, I'm not saying she's going to be playing in college. She may, hopefully, but when you get to college, the uh, the middles have to serve. No liberos are not allowed to serve. Ryan Sauer finding that side over there. She likes that. 15-8. Patrick Henry on top. Midway through first set. Come all the way back around again. And just a, I mean, the serve is, it, it's like a high pop fly. It's uh, becoming effective. There's another one. Going to the middle there. Outside for Madison. Middle for Ryan. Outside, Madison. Good hard hit there. Allie Tompkins trying to get that up. Not enough air. 17-8 as Coach Carpenter wants to call another timeout for the Raiders. He is notoriously good for stopping runs on, with his timeouts. Something magical about his timeouts. You know, last year when PH played Atley four times, and uh, lost all four times. There were a couple of matches where PH was really tight and, and winning um, on runs, and he calls timeout and just stops the run, and Atlee comes back and wins. Frustrating. But effective for him. So another thing that's not on line for PH, and some schools do have it online and, and PH just doesn't, is there are no records and schedules for the JV teams. So the varsity, you can go online, you can see the whole schedule, you can see who won and the scores and such, but for JV, nothing. We have to go back and before next week and check out the record.
I remember early on, the girls were having some trouble winning in the first few matches, but I feel like they've won just about everything since. Simone just dropping bombs on them. And there's an outside. Oh, good block by Sauer. Got into the net, though, unfortunately. <laughs> so that was called on, looks like he put up an eight, so that would be on Miley Murray into the net. But it, it, it was a good block. Both girls were right there. It's good, good effort. Sauer, another one. She kind of cuts it a little bit like Zofia does. Usually, usually hits it to the left, to her left. There's Madison serving, and that's going to be an ace. Off the hands of the eighth grader, Engel. 21-9 pH, dominating into the net. That's how you run a you end a run. Have me say something like dominating. Back in is Nwabodo, the other middle for Atlee. A strong hit for six. Another kill. 22-10. Sophia canals to the front line. And here's Emma Hutto. Oh, oh, look at that. Just getting it over. Ah, good hustle by Atley. Sophia, good try. Good swing. I like the swing. I like the aggression. Just into the net. Who's this? Izzy Turnour. High set. That was uh, a little too high, I think. Creating the confusion. 23-11, Miley Murray trying to serve this out. I didn't mean that way. I didn't mean serve it out. <laughs> Fainer to serve. That's a good serve there. Good block. Canals right there. Lobodo trying to push it over, but Sophia was right there. And a six. Set point. Oh, good spot. They are trying to find that empty spot in the middle, but PH is finding a good, good hustle to get to it. Oh, there it is. Atley, a little confused in trying to get that over. So PH wins set one, 25-12, dominating performance in set one. And we'll see if they can continue in set two here. We'll see if... Uh, Coach Bon Giovanni tries to move a few other players in and out this set. We'll see what happens. That's a good win against Atley, though. It's a strong team. One more quick look at the boys as T. 
tonight they, this is their only match tonight. They host Atlee and it is senior night at Patrick Henry for the boys. There are four or five of them, I think, on the team that will have their ceremony between matches, between the JV and the varsity match. And we'll see that next week. There was, there was thoughts that tonight was senior night for these Atlee girls. Uh, but that is not the case um, as uh, the girls, the Patrick Henry girls brought some flowers for them <laughs> to give to them thinking it was senior night or specifically uh, Wren was given the flowers to Jada Foreman, the middle for the Raiders. But again, it'll be next week for them some time. Perhaps they're hosting Mechanicsville next week. I'm not sure. But the boys are kind of locked into number two right there. Um, unless they lose to Alley tonight and lose a couple next week. I just don't see it happening, though, as they have the same. Actually, no, they only have one match next week, too. Hanover, because Highland Springs, we go to Highland Springs, but Highland Springs does not have a boys team. So the Patrick Henry boys have tonight, and they have next Thursday, and that's it. Uh, and you can see they're, they've played 18. They've got... 20 on the schedule. They should have 21, though, because they played in a tournament and had three matches. It only counts for two. Uh, so they should have 21. But I think uh, maybe they only scheduled 17 on their outside of the tournament. So that, that must be the case. So good for PH. They'll be hosting in the playoffs. I heard from Coach Townsend today at the boys' side. He said they're coming together very nicely and has a good feeling about a deep run in the playoffs. So who's on? Who's on for Patrick Henry? I see Madison. Mays in there. I see Simone is in there still. Hannah six. So Madison and Hannah Miley. It's all the same. Um, Ryan Sauer and, and Sophia Canals in the middle. So the same lineup to start. Only seeing five other girls on the bench tonight. So maybe. Running a little light. Couple of couple of girls not here tonight. Five, six. So there's twelve here. I see Malia and I see Annalise. I see Aubriana. I see Shelby Tomlin. I think I see Courtney. Oh, that might be Emma. No, that's not Emma. So Emma Goldman's not here. And Kate Balut, absent tonight. And hustle there, Ryan rolling it over. Ryan has got a knack for that. Kind of taking a ball that's a little behind her and just turning her body, kind of hitting it backwards. Good hands. Sour. She gets it back. Simone takes that first one, so Emma will set. And that ball probably should have been called a double. And that was hit twice by the libero, but it wasn't. Made it over. Two to one, Patrick Henry. Here is Emery Fisher for the Raiders. Raiders look similar as far as who's in. This set to start. 
Ryan's going deep on that one. Simone setting up Miley. And a good deep hit there as Miley is sitting out there on the outside. So it just, it just hadn't switched yet as far as she's playing right side. She just happened to be on the left side there. There's a good strong hit. Kind of a side hit there by Cora Feener. Misdirection. 3-2 pH. Good pass by Mays. And Natalie struggling. So Hutto to serve. As Canals makes it to the front row. Good hustle. Hutto getting that one. Oh. Six months that one back. So that's Tompkins off and then catcher came in for. Her. Oh, is she getting it? Yes. Hannah Six just gently pushing that over the blocker. It's a good spot. Looks like, oh, I see. It was uh, Olivia Spoonoggle coming in to play opposite, play right side. Miley Murray, watch those feet. Oh, she was on the line again, and he saw it that time. Yep. Fainer back to serve, outside hitter. Mays. Oh, look at Sophia, left-handed. Simone setting up Mays from the back. Hustle. Emma covering that spot. Oh, what a hit. And a six. Putting some mustard on that one. So Hannah, an eighth grader, and her sister Addison, a junior. Probably, I'm guessing... There's a chance they'll be playing together next year, but that's if Coach Jones feels the f as a freshman, she'll be on the varsity. Never know. Long ways away. Murray, good dig. Outside, Mays. Good hard hit by Mays, too. That's a great turn by six. That's going to be a double not called, though. Oh, that hit Mays in the foot. Or, excuse me, Murray. Trying to get out of the way. Saw that happen in a boys championship match down at the Siegel Center once. The boys were playing Midlothian, I think. One of their players did that. Hutto is everywhere right now. Oh, Simone had to, oh, into the net. 
Simone had to push that over as the pass was a little kind of over the neutral zone. She didn't have anything to do but push it over. Caroline Coleman was there awaiting it. Mays, back to Mays. Into the corner. Oh, is there enough? Not enough. Engel couldn't quite get enough on it. So Sophia's going to serve again. She's uh, throwing it. Probably with the wrong hand there is typically you want to toss it up with the hand you're hitting with. Or two hands. Like Tompkins just did. Here's Lawson. You can see her throwing, well, she throws an opposite also. That's gonna go long. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know what, <laughs> Atley was getting excited. The up ref called it a point for Atley. And then he, he had just mixed, mixed himself up. hit. Simone back to Murray. Oh, couldn't get out of the way there. Simone and Ryan got their feet tangled. So here's Emery Fisher. Oh, a good push there. <laughs> kind, of a, kind of a pop with two hands there for six. Point for PH, 10-9, Patrick Henry. Another service error for PH. This will be a middle, yep, this is Caroline Coleman. Six, too hard, or too far, I should say. I don't ever think it's too hard, I like it. And they hit it hard and get aggressive. Coleman to serve again. And Hutto's gonna have to set this up, sour. Ooh, tall. And that's going to go long. Corey Fainer hitting that one out. So here's Hutto. Not getting over the net. So 12-11 pH. Much tighter set this time. pH not, didn't get out to that 8-0 lead like last time. That'll be a point. Ace, Hutto. Saw Emma's brother in the stands watching.
Nice job by Murray. Just go ahead and pop that over. Smart play. Lots of bumps right now. Too far on that one. As the girls develop, they'll get more confidence in those down balls, over, overhand down ball hits. PH is up 13-12 right now. Another lefty hit by Sophia. Ambidextrous. Stay behind the line there. And look at that. Sophia taking the overpass, left-handed. I feel like she just doesn't care whether she uses her right or her left. It's good, good skill to have. Oh, into the net. Here's Feener again. Emma, Emma having a great night. So Hannah will try to put a few on for PH, up 16, 13. That's a good dig there. Oh, six tried to pop it forward, but didn't work out. Oh, not enough for Cutto. So angle will serve, and the middle switch will happen. Back in comes Coleman. Coleman has uh, uh, pro proven to be a little more experienced middle, at least uh, the way she's showing. Get up there to block and such. <laughs> so Canals will serve again. We're going to have a Serving specialist, so Malia Stewart come in for Knaus. Just to serve. Good spot. I think that Atlee may have been a little confused on whether to go after it or not, whether it was long or what, but it worked out. Time out. Coach Carpenter calling it. PH up 18-14. And I wanted to give a shout out, something I haven't done all year, and I apologize, but for the JV and actually just really for Patrick Henry Volleyball, we have two managers, and Madison Dyer and Allie Melgard. They're both eighth graders, and... Um, They've been very dedicated all year to helping out. I know they show up to JV practice and get to be on the court and all that. But during games, I mean, they're down there keeping score. They do the work. And uh, I know the. it's always a kind of a, I don't know, you know, it's not a, glor a glory position by any stretch. <laughs> You're not out on the court at all, but. Nice job by the managers this year. Madison Dyer, Ali Melgard. So perhaps we'll see him next year on the court. Malia Stewart. Big long set there. Six, good pass. And Sauer goes deep. Coleman 
That's a good hit by Coleman, two-handing that over. Yeah, no, that's fine. Good point for PH. 19, 19-14, uh, PH. Malia still going. Pretty good coming in cold and scoring a few points for the team. Allie scrambling, giving us a free one here. That's not going to make it over, though. Another point for Malia. And that's going to go. Oh, that's just long. Oh, okay. He called He called it in. That was not in. But they don't get them all right. 2015 PH. Perhaps it won't matter. Here comes Tompkins back in. Good job by Malia, too. Six, good pass. Simone left-handed, good spot. That's a double not called again. I don't think we're calling them tonight. And that's a corner hit, so that's a point for the Raiders. And I, I mentioned this earlier about doubles. There are some referees that really, especially in the travel arenas, when you get into travel tournaments, quite often you'll see Doubles almost never called. The, the idea is a double is a very poor set. And so there's a disadvantage anyway. Unless it's a completely blatant double hit. It won't be called. Good hustle by Murray. You could see her racing in. 2017 timeout Patrick Henry. Maybe that missed call does come back to haunt us. We'll see. First timeout for Coach Alyssa. I believe I'm looking at the varsity team here down in front of me. 4-4-4 four, 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 and 2. So it looks like the whole team is here. 14 in the house. Hildebrand's back. They're all here. Hopefully they're all healthy and 100% as well. So 2017, Patrick Henry, Tompkins serving. And there's six, Miley going into the corner a little far. Couldn't see it with the up ref, but a little, just a little too far on that one. That's a miss hit on Emma's part. She's had a fantastic night, like I was saying, and that's probably her, really her only miss hit of the night so far. 20 to 19. PH still on top. Simone will give him a free ball here. Outside hit. These are, you're seeing things happen by the JV players right now that they just wouldn't have done in the beginning of the season. Some of those low balls and getting them up in the air properly. Oh, and Mays goes for the line. I don't know if it was going to go out or not, but Atley went after it. 21-19. Stop the bleeding. Simone to serve. Oh, 
Dropping a bomb into the side there. Natalie keeps it alive. And there's a point. Good hustle by the Patriots. 22-19. Atley, too, has gotten better at returning Simone's serves. That was going to go out. You could hear Atley calling out. And Engel uh, just wanted to try to keep that one alive. Off of her hands. 23-19. Timeout. Atley. Again, Coach Carpenter trying to stop the bleeding. Not much room left on the scoreboard for him. So next week we'll be at Highland Springs on Tuesday, and I will go live on that match. Uh, that is, since that is away and in a Henrico facility, I'll be able to broadcast live. That'll be the last live broadcast scheduled for the for the year. Um, you know, it just depends on the playoff situation as to where we end up and what we can do. But for certain, I'll do that one live. Uh, because next Thursday we'll be at home against Hanover. And at home, as you know, I can't go live. So um, I do know that Atley has started, has begun their relationship with the NFHS Network. So this game right now is live on the NFHS Network. Uh, you'll be able to see it in a day or so on demand. Varsity will be the same. Six, Simone, middle, Sauer goes deep, just far, just too far on that. The up ref was blinded, he looked at the down ref, he saw it. So 23-20, the timeout works again. Here's Emery Fisher. That's a good running serve there, she's got. Coleman, oh, Emma getting it. And, oh, nice, nice decision by Simone. Using that tall left hand. There's an ace, and that'll do it. Madison Mays finishes it off. 25-20, set number two. PH beating Atley 2-0. I believe that was what happened early in the season as well. So good news for the future for Patrick Henry and their rivalry with Atley. So again, nice job by the Lady Patriots winning 2-0 here at Atley High School. And I will sign off and get ready for the varsity match coming up here. So... And thanks for joining me here. And we will see you Tuesday live. Good night.